All right, we are going to see the Laplace transform of the function square root of t. And yes, we can write square root of t as t to the 1 half power, but we cannot use the formula for the Laplace transform of t to the nth power, because that formula is only good if n is a non-negative whole number. Here, this is t to the 1 half power. It's a fraction, right? So we cannot use that formula, and in that case, what can we do right here? Well, let's go back to the fundamental. Ask yourself, have we done anything that's similar to the Laplace transform of the square root of t? And yes, we have. And let me write this down right here for you guys. This is the one that we know, all right? And you can watch the video in the description, all right? Well, we have the Laplace transform of the function 1 over square root of t. And the reason I bring this up is because, you see, both of them have square root t. And even though this right here is in the denominator for the square root t, but close enough at the moment, right? This is the best that we can use at the moment. Anyway, the result of this is equal to square root of pi over square root of s, under the condition that s has to be greater than 0. Okay, this is what we have. What else do we know, though? Do we have any other result that can possibly to help us out? Well, as you can see, this is square root of t, and this is 1 over square root of t, and this one really nice theorem that we have seen in the past as well, that can also help us out. Let me write this down right here for you guys. So let's say if I have the Laplace transform of a function, let me just put it down as f of t like this for now. So suppose that you do have a Laplace transform of f of t, let me write this down as f of s, right? Well, if inside here I multiply by just a t with f of t, this right here on the right-hand side, all I have to do is go ahead and differentiate this with respect to s only one time, and also multiply this by negative 1 only one time. If you multiply f of t by t squared, you differentiate the right-hand side twice and multiply by the negative 1 twice, all right? And that's a pattern. So this is a nice theorem. When you multiply by t with f of t, you do this. Well, if you put them together, Notice that if you multiply by t with 1 over square root t, we get exactly square root t, isn't it? How nice is this, right? So now I will just write down all the work for you guys. First of all, let me put this down. Let's do the Laplace transform of that, which is 1 over square root of t. And we know this is equal to square root of pi, and let me just put it down right here. And instead of 1 over square root of s, let me put that down as parentheses s to the negative one half power because I know I'm about to take the derivative on the right hand side. So I'm just going to get ready right here first. All right? Okay, inside here, all I'm going to do is multiply this by t so that you see this is going to give you the Laplace transform of square root of t, right? And I multiply this by t, so on the right hand side, I will have to differentiate this with respect to s one time. And also, don't forget to multiply by negative 1. And now let's just get to work. Okay, so I have this negative in the front. Inside here, let me bring the negative 1 half to the front, so we have negative 1 half, and then this is just a constant, so we keep it square root of pi. And of course, don't forget to minus 1. Remember, you bring this to the front, and then minus 1, isn't it? And negative 1 half minus 1 is s to the negative 3 half. And this is pretty much what we have. At the end, you see that negative times negative is positive, and this is on the numerator, so we have square root of pi over the 2 is on the denominator right here. And just to emphasize, this is s. This is not 5. Let me put this down in red. We have s. And this right here is going to be positive 3 half power in the denominator. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the Laplace transform of square root of t right here. And just a small condition right here, s has to be greater than 0. Once again, I should put down the s in red. This is not a 5. Even though, yes, 5 is greater than 0, but you know the deal. Anyway, that's it.